Hi folks, welcome back. In this video I want to talk about uh, electrolytes uh, in the body and um, they work basically the same as electrolytes and, and batteries do uh, except the body uses uh, enzymatic catalysts to uh, perform the uh, uh, reactions a lot more efficiently. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is, is hydration. We all know that we're 90% uh, water and if you're well hydrated you're, you're probably more higher than that. But what a lot of people don't know is that the hydration in your body is is really intimately connected to the sodium uh, potassium ion pump which of course uh, pumps sodium and potassium in, in and out of the cell along with water so it can maintain uh, concentration of ions and the uh, electrical potential between the inside and the outside of the cell. And then, <clears throat> of course we can influence that electrical potential of the cell by what we eat of course which contains the minerals which contains the elements sodium and potassium. Uh, and we can also we know that we can also influence this electrical potential with uh, current collectors on our body or more commonly called jewelry if you're using two dissimilar metals. So <coughs> uh, I want to if we go to talk about the uh, minerals in the in the body a little bit. Um, they're used in inorganic reactions which you have a lot of reactions going on in your body and you have the minerals are used in inorganic reactions which break the minerals down into uh, the elements uh, in ion form which are then used in organic reactions. Okay, so you have a lot of um, uh, cofactors. There are cofactors in, the, in chemical uh, reaction and the magnesium ion alone is used in uh, over 275 chemical reactions in the body and then if you think that the products of those uh, reactions with the magnesium ion are also used in further reactions down the metabolic uh, process line you can see that how important magnesium is in the body and there and all the elements have are, are important but magnesium is extremely important because of the number of reactions it takes place in and some uh, some uh, elements are converted into vitamins uh, which make them organic reactants then and like uh, B12 is a good example it's, it's formed around cobalt and uh, we can't produce B12 ourselves but there are bacteria that do produce B12. Okay, it's, and one of the things that I've learned in the lab, and I've been studying this stuff for like 10 years now, <clears throat> since I got really sick and then had to recover my health, is that the government's RDA is, is way to hell off. We are all highly deficient in minerals. Uh, so let's go over some of the, the main problems we have with our mineral deficiencies. I've already mentioned that magnesium is incredibly important. We can't get too much of it um, because it, you you won't overdose on it. It'll give you you'll reach bowel intolerance, which means it'll give you the shits. Here's a, a big problem: you can't eat enough food to get all the magnesium you need or the potassium. Let's say bananas are high in potassium. What are you going to eat? A hundred bananas to get the amount of potassium your body needs? No, nah, you've got to do it by supplying the minerals in in a inorganic form and let your body or the bacteria in it use that then to to uh, give you what you need okay now <clears throat> we have another problem is the potassium and sodium uh, balance we need for this ion pump up here it, it needs to be in favor of the potassium it needs to be like five to ten times more potassium than sodium to operate great or ideally and what we've done in our modern society we've reversed that we're eating like eight to ten times more sodium than we are potassium so and that's a big problem for people you know we need some sodium in your diet but we don't need ten times more than 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 we have potassium which we're not getting enough of so we have to increase our magnesium we have to increase our potassium we have to reduce our sodium 
and then we get to calcium now here's the here's a big problem right here this we're getting people are getting a lot of calcium but they're not getting a good bioavailable calcium which is plant-based you know we get our calcium from milk and cheese and stuff that's animal based and it causes problems um, so and I'll, I'll, pre I'll give you some links at the end of this or in the uh, in the box below the video that you can uh, check out and check out this one calcium the death by calcium a doctor wrote a book great book okay now uh, another one we're highly deficient in is uh, sulfur okay that's why magnesium sulfate is on the world's health list of one of the, of the most uh, beneficial drugs you know <laughs> they call everything a drug but anyway uh, so Epsom salt great source of magnesium and sulfur and we're all we need sulfates in the body we are everybody's not getting enough sulfur if you eat a shitload of onions and garlic and stuff you'll get uh, that gives you sulfur that's, that's what the smell is and uh, all the sulfates in the body then are used to produce vitamin D and a lot of people don't know that and there's another link to a doctor that's investigated the link between uh, sulfur and vitamin D so without sulfur you can't make vitamin D either and of course you know what happens to you if you don't get enough vitamin D okay and then um, the last two uh, I mean all there's some more important ones but the ones that were highly deficient in is selenium and iodine and those two have to be taken together because they are um, used for uh, a hormone production in the body thyroxin and all those things with the iodine and they're also used for DNA repair and the selenium and so now I'm going to go over um, the products that I use and and how I and how I take my um, uh, my minerals and which is which is most of my diet really all right I'm back with the products that I use <clears throat> this first one here is a bottle of uh, this is homemade Lugol solution uh, you buy some iodine crystals and you buy some potassium iodide uh, crystals and you dissolve a little bit in uh, of both of them in some distilled water and it forms a stable um, iodine and of course you have to keep it in a dark bottle because the light affects uh, halogens all right, so uh, anyway, that's uh, uh, that's the iodine that I use, and I take some of this every day. Uh, it has an affinity for vitamin C, so uh, in my vitamin C uh, drinks, I put a little shot of this in there, and it binds with the vitamin C and absorbs even better because vitamin C gets goes through your whole body. So anyway, I won't go into the debate about. Uh, you know why they put iodine in salt you know with a whole lot of chlorine in it which competes with the iodine that's a, probably a conspiracy right there but anyway so uh, there's my source of iodine and you need selenium as I said to go with the iodine and this is Brazil nuts right here and Brazil nuts are the only source only real high concentration source of selenium that you can get it's not common in, in a lot of foods except in real tiny amounts but uh, Brazil nuts have 2500 times the amount of selenium that uh, uh, that other foods that the next highest food has so um, anyway that's uh, where I, I get my selenium is from Brazil nuts which are all harvested in the wild uh, and so they're not cultivated and, uh, it's an Amazon product so uh, that's that and then um, vitamins the B vitamins um, you need of course a lot of B vitamins and the highest concentration of B vitamins that I've found are one is wheat germ which is really dirt cheap and so I keep a big container of, of wheat germ and I sprinkle it on top of my salad and uh, things like that put it in uh, smoothies or something you can do it so uh, a real real nice one and then uh, yeast brewer's yeast or nutritional yeast is another really good source of uh, B vitamins, and so I and I use uh, I uh, use brewer's yeast and wheat germ, so that my two natural sources of B vitamins, and then I also take a, a B complex that you know, contains uh, a few other 
things that uh, just boost the whole thing. And B complex is real cheap. All right, and then uh, I have a methyl B12. I use. You can buy methyl B12 or um, what's the other one? Cyano B12. And uh, the methyl one is uh, your your body can absorb it a lot more bioavailable than the other one. Although the other one, your body can uh, convert it, I guess, into this form. So that's uh, that's basically my B vitamins right there. And then uh, vitamin C, I could do a whole video on vitamin C because most animals uh, produce their own vitamin C and vitamin C is great detoxer, uh, kills viruses and all kinds of things that will really boost your whole immune system and that's why of course it's good for, uh, but you know humans we've lost our ability to produce vitamin C along with a few other animals and that's probably why we get sick a lot easier than uh, wild animals do. You know, you can see them drinking out of mud puddles and stuff. It doesn't seem to bother them a bit. We go out and drink out of a mud puddle, though, we're going to get sick. So, and vitamin C is one of the uh, one of the reasons for that. And you can get vitamin C, actually, so there's two forms of it. Some vitamin C, uh, ascorbic acid, is the, is the one that everybody thinks of, but you can also buy an ascorbate vitamin C, which your body actually converts ascorbate into ascorbic acid and vice versa too. So um, what I've found, uh, and I will include a link below, that you can, if you take high doses of sodium ascorbate here, and actually it'd be better if it was potassium ascorbate, which you can make by taking potassium bicarbonate here. This is potassium bicarbonate. Show you that right so if you can see the that and then you mix that with vitamin C in proportions that it, uh, it's about equal it's slightly uh, off but if you mix about equal proportions of these two you'll uh, they'll consume each other and you'll produce uh, potassium ascorbate but uh, okay and then let's see what else do I use Now here's my source of magnesium. This is, uh, and I use magnesium glycinate here. And the reason I use magnesium glycinate is because of the glyphosate problem. You know, uh, our body's uh, glycine is a, is a common amino acid that w uh, your body needs. And glyphosate, which is Roundup, you know, is causing all kinds of havoc in the body because it, in the body because it substitutes for glycine. Okay, now this is magnesium. So one of the things you can do to protect yourself from glyphosate or Roundup is provide other forms of glycine in your body. You can take glycine supplements, and but I take magnesium glycine. That way, I'm getting some glycine and the big boost of magnesium every day. And so that's my main source of magnesium, although I do take, uh, this is magnesium sulfate here. So, and this is, I mean, Epsom salt's a dirt cheap. So, uh, and this is, a, this is a great one. This is the first thing I started supplementing with, actually. And I noticed a huge uh, increase in my health as I started uh, taking more uh, magnesium sulfate. And then I started adding other things. But <coughs> now the last I want to talk about is fiber. Now this, this may be actually the most important mineral or uh, nutrient, I should say, that our bodies need. We do not get enough fiber and I, I provided a link below the uh, video about, about fiber from an expert. But this acacia fiber is, is the best that I've come across for uh, taking fiber and it's really soluble and, and you know we need most people are getting like three or four or five grams of fiber a day and we need like more like 40 or 50 grams a day really to be uh,